Okay, before we get back to blue and green, let's experiment. Let's play one example of a really leapy melody that just happens to have one stepwise segment. And let's see how we perceive that stepwise segment. Isn't it crazy how that little stepwise segment sticks out? It just sounds different from everything else in the texture. But still, although there's a general tendency to hear that which is different and remember it, it's not to say that steps and leaps are the same. Looking back at our example of the first leap in blue and green, notice how that D natural we leapt to seems to beg for some sort of explanation. Why that note? What are you going to do about it, Mr. Evans? Well, a very real answer can come from looking at the next high point in the melody. The next isolated high point in the melody is the C natural. Although there are a few other leaps right before and after it, this time it's highlighted in our hearing because it's the highest point, the top of an arcing line. The amazing thing is our ear links these three notes, the E, the D, and the C together as a sort of outlining larger melody that occurs at the same time as the faster moving, less analytical one. Let's prove this to ourselves by actually singing Three Blind Mice from the beginning of the tune, very slowly, putting the three on the E, the blind on the D, and a couple measures later, mice on the C. Ready? Here we go. Here's the three. Three So there's that slow moving melody in the background and a faster moving, more explicit and ornamental melody in the foreground. Two melodies at once, discernible because the leaps and contours of the melody help us split our perception into two parts. This doesn't mean, of course, that it's a good melody. It's just an interesting phenomenon. What makes it a good melody is more in the realm of opinion but that in turn doesn't mean we can't talk more specifically about our opinions and why we might love this or any other tune. In fact, that's the fun part. What we're doing now is learning a language so we can talk about how we love this music. A common component in good music is a playful manipulation of expectations. Once you know how to create expectations, you can fool around with them. And the ways you choose to do so will go a long way in defining yourself as a musician. Now, of course, not all great music plays with expectation. Groove music and other sorts of trance music seems to do just the opposite. Experiment with the elimination of expectations by means of a primal, often joyful repetitiveness. After our three blind mice background melody, we expect the next background note to be another step lower. What Bill Evans does, though, is give us the same note. He gives us the C natural again. In blue and green, our created background expectation is met with a stubborn repetition. If anything, this gives us a sense the note really has to change now, but this intensification of our expectation is used to add to the delightful surprise of a note, while a step lower, it's the wrong step lower. The pieces had B-flat so far, but this is a B natural. Again, a fantastic way to figure out what a note does and why it's special is to change it. Look what happens to the melody if we continue the downward line to the expected B-flat instead of the C. Here's the E, the D, the C, now a B-flat, an A. I think we can say without going too much farther that this version of the melody is just worse. Bill Evans with a hangover. Or um, maybe without one? Who can say? The clever splitting of the melody into two lines using our differential perception of leaps versus steps, it's not enough. It's how we use these techniques like that. And to what end? Those are the most important and captivating tools in a composer's toolbox. It's akin to a magician convincing you she's showing you one illusion when she's really using a trick to make a much subtler kind of magic.